there. Let's talk about modeling with geometry. So here we have some basic geometric shapes, both two-dimensional and three-dimensional. And some key things to remember here in specifics are a sphere, cube, cylinder, pyramid, rectangular prism, cone, and also, of course, square, rectangle, circle, oval, kind of, triangle, and all the polygons in general. Let's start off with the circle. Circle is a zero gone because it has no sides or angles. It just, it's in a loop. So we need to find the circumference. If we do, what we need to know is that every circle has a radius. And the radius is the distance from the center to the edge of a, tr of a circle. Any of these are radiuses, radii. And a radii, a radius, helps us to find out the area or the circumference. The circumference is how much space it can go about, pretty much meaning the distance around the whole object. So it's kind of like the perimeter. And the circumference for a circle would be pi 2r, 2 pi r. And the reason why it's 2 pi r is because 2 pi is another way of saying 360 degrees times r. Except that this is in radians instead of degrees. And radians is what we use for a normal number. So this is for the circumference. And for the area, our formula would be pi r squared. And the reason why it's pi r squared is because we multiply by pi as our constants here. And we square r because we're trying to the area, which is normally length times width. Let's think of it like that. Length times width, we know the width of a circle is the radius. Let's call it radius or diameter. So we would square the radius. And the reason why we square it is because we need to find radius times the radius, length times width. So let's talk about the volume of a cylinder. So cylinders are these ones over here. And a cylinder kind of looks like, just like the picture. The height is the straight line. The vertical point from the bottom of the cylinder to the top. So it's all of this right here. And the radius, just like a circle, radius. So the volume would be, so we would have to find the volume, which is like the area of each circle. So we would have pi r squared. And we have a height that we have to multiply by to get the volume. And this would be a formula right here for a cylinder. Now let's move on to a pyramid. A pyramid, let's draw it like this. That's what it would look like. And kind of want to make it a little better. There we go. That's a pyramid, a basic shape. Let's call this length times width. And from here to here, that'd be our height. Just like any standard one. The bottom of the pyramid, it's a rectangle. And the top is just four triangles that make up the pyramid. So what we need to know to find the volume is that we need to know length times width times height like any other box. So volume length times width times height. There's a catch though. That's normally our volume formula for a normal square prism, rectangular prism, but this is a triangle. So what we need to do is divide by 3. Dividing by each by 4 for length, width, and height. That would be our volume for a pyramid. Similarly, we have a cone, which is pretty similar, except it has more of a circular aspect to it. So when we draw a cone, rectangle, circleish bottom, and we have our height and radius. 
keep in mind that this is 3D. Just like a cylinder almost, which, remind you, looks like this, except that we're cutting out this part right here. So we're leaving out the shaded part. So, if we think about it, we still have to find the area of a circle, so let's say pi r squared. And then, we need to find the height, so times the height. But, just like the pyramid, it's divided by 3, because 3 sides of a triangle make it divided by 3 in order to balance out that difference from the regular right cylinder. Alright, let's quickly go over why we need to know certain shapes. Well, of course, we need to apply them in real life. There's so many things, endless. This is the building blocks of geometry. And there's so many things you can apply into shapes. When you drink out of a can, like a Progresso soup, it's a cylinder. So, if you're like a math whiz, and you like calculating little things, you can actually find the area or a volume of any object that looks like one of these standard geometric shapes and find their area or volume. If you're curious how much liquid is actually in your container of Progresso soup, you can actually calculate it with standard formulas. And if you wanted to find out how tall was your lamp, for instance, your lamp would look, let's say, a little like this. And if you wanted to find out how tall it was or what its volume is, you just use area for circle, uh, a stick, or a really thin rectangular prism, and cube. There's so many applications, and you could go from iPads to erasers to books to circular objects to balls. And there's so many ways you can apply this simple concept of geometry. Shapes. Thank you for watching. This has been provided to you by satfreepractice.com.